So I know I said I wanted to keep my passport for a very long time and build it up and enjoy it. And I did. However, over the past few months of owning mine, I've discovered one critical factor that makes me want to sell this. Actually, I'm, it seemed like I'm going to get... Um, someone actually did that. That's going to stay in the video. So those of you that have been around the channel for a few months already know Marley. This is my 1999 Honda Passport LX. It has 144,000 miles. She is for sale and you could be the next owner. I got her in August of 2022 with 139,000 miles. One of my lowest mileage cars besides my S60 and my Accord. And I've really come to like this thing, especially in town. But when it comes to the highway, if this doesn't look like much of a Honda to you, you have a pretty keen eye because this isn't. It's based off of the Isuzu Rodeo. This one is actually the second generation. The Isuzu Rodeo of this generation went from 1998 to 2004, but the Passport, due to its successor, the Pilot, only went until 2002. And also, if you have a Passport of your own, it may look different to this. There's a chance because these had two different faces. This is the pre-refresh and the post-refresh came out for 2001. One. Different headlights, different bumper, and a different grille. I like those a little bit more. Before we go, I wanted to do this for my own satisfaction. You know, the noises of the locks. And then the key. And let's go. In the past and recently, I'm sure a lot of you have watched my videos on Thor, my 2010 Volvo XC90 V8. I really enjoyed that car, but it was too good of an on-road car and not a good off-roader. Now, this is a great off-roader, but not great on the road. It accelerates pretty well. These are pretty peppy and fun to drive around town. On this one, I put a bit of work into the suspension. I've done all four shocks. I did some, I did brakes, I did tie rods and alignment. So this is one of the better driving and I think better examples of a Passport. Around town, these trucks are pretty piggish. Not just these rodeos, but the forerunners, the Pathfinder is everything. This, I get about 13 MPG in town. Strictly city driving, but it can redeem itself, maybe, because I get, I've seen 18 MPG on the highway. Thankfully for me, those numbers aren't too painful to swallow because of my V8 XC90, which did about the same. So I'm sure you can hear it, but these things are not that refined. There's a lot of wind noise. There's a lot of engine noise. There's road noise as well. It feels like I'm driving something more related to a Jeep than a Honda. If you've been around my channel longer than just a few months like Marley, you've known that I've had many, many, many experiences with some shitty cars. And to be completely honest, before we talk about the engine, this has been one of my most reliable vehicles I've owned. So under the hood of this venerable machine is a 3.2 liter V6. This is not a Honda V6. This is strictly an Isuzu engine. They only offered this engine in the Rodeo, the Passport, and the Isuzu Amigo, which also turned into the Rodeo Sport. And over the past few months, I've really come to know this engine after all the maintenance that I've done to it. Like I've done spark plugs, coil packs, idle air control valve, of course, oil changes. I've even replaced some belts. So this is a really ready to go engine. This engine makes 205 horsepower and 215 pound feet of torque. These actually made a little bit more power than the third gen forerunners that made 183 horsepower. The later years of the Isuzu Rodeo, but not these, got a direct injected 3.5 liter V6 that made 250 horsepower. But the only thing with those is parts are a little harder to find. 
and also they're just a little bit harder to work on. There was also one night that I fell into a bit of a rabbit hole learning about this whole platform. Because Isuzu and GM were so tight back in the day, you could put a lot of different engines in these with relative ease. You could do the 3800 from Buicks, you could do the 4.3 from the S10s, you could do the 5.7. There's a lot of options, but you know, if I was to do that, that would be pretty cool. Something that was pretty different back in the day even was that these used torsion bar front suspension compared to the normal coil springs on stuff like Forerunners and Pathfinders. To me, I wouldn't say awful driving dynamics, but it's really made me think because I want to lift this one day because you'll see here if I do. You know how much I lean and I'm do I was doing 30. Imagine having to do a high speed lean change at like 80. To go off-roading, at least around here, you have to drive at least an hour and a half to get anywhere. So that involves the highway. But the suspension is just too softly sprung and I know I could probably change springs and things like that, but I feel like I'd be making this, I'd try to make this something that it's not. Something that I do like about these is how small they are, because you could tell me to go down to DC and I'd be like, okay, because this is very easy to park. It has a reasonably tight turning circle for an SUV and it's still fun to drive. Like that's my thing with this. I really love driving this but only around town, like driving slowly. The back seat of these gets even more simple, but I was surprised by how much room there is back here. Like you could see, I'm five foot nine and headroom really good because this thing is a box. Legroom is, pre well, knee room is pretty good and I can fit my feet under the seat. The center hump isn't that intrusive either. So, you know, three adults could fit back here. It'd be a little bit tighter, but that's normal with all these older SUVs. There's no armrest, but you do have an ashtray for the children to smoke and toke. And then there's two cup holders underneath that, which don't work that well. But the general theme of the rodeos and passports, at least to me, is bare bones, reliable, and rugged. And this is all three of those. If you're interested in an actual review of my passport, I'll link the video up here. But I hope you all enjoyed this brief tour and a reasoning on why I'm selling my passport. I don't really have to give a reason, but I wanted to make a farewell video of this. Over the past about two years, I've been, you know, trying different SUVs, so I might as well document it and show you guys. But thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's like 30 degrees right now. I'm gonna get back in the car and go home. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, peeps.